5th of April, 1890, Joseph Merrick died in his room, age just 27. The circumstances of his sudden death have always been a mystery. Merrick usually slept in a sitting position, his legs drawn up, his arms clasped around them, and his massive skull resting on the points of his knees. But this time, he was found dead, lying on his back. Treves thought he'd suffocated in his sleep. But he also wondered whether he might have deliberately ended his life. He often said to me that he wished he could lie down to sleep like other people. I think on this last night, he must with some determination have made the experiment. The pillow was soft, and the head, when placed on it, must have fallen backwards and caused a dislocation of the neck. Surgeon Alex Vaccaro and bone specialist Rose Drew want to reopen the investigation of Merrick's death. Any neural crest cell that could be a melanocyte. Trees make, makes a supposition that he wanted to be like normal people and he wanted to lean backwards and sleep. It doesn't make any sense to me that that would occur because he had a well-developed cervical musculature. He was used to his normal uh, movements. And if you lean back and if you're falling asleep and if you lean back and you're cutting off air, most people will suddenly cough just like you can't drown yourself. It just, all of a sudden, you, you, you stop breathing. You, it's like a snoring phenomenon. You, then you, you wake up and move over. When they examine the skeleton more closely, they can both see damage to the two vertebrae directly beneath the skull, known as C1 and C2. But what's striking is you look in the upper cervical spine. The skull is not in that position to C1. And right. C1 is also known as the atlas. Because it holds up the world. Because it holds up the world. Exactly. C1 moves with the skull, and C2, also known as the axis, moves with the bottom cervical spine or subaxial spine. Because it has spine. that peg that it turns on. The, and the peg is the odontoid. What is clear here is that there's a dislocation of the first on the second vertebrae. What do you think? Well, the thing is, the two vertebrae, the, the C1 and the C2, did originally sit together somewhat normally. You can tell the way the, the articulations are. They are in a normal position except the articulation at the base of the skull. That's in the wrong position. So something was already amiss. So I, I don't think any... When Alex and Rose reenact the pose Merrick normally adopted when going to sleep, the picture becomes clear. Why don't we show them exactly how... This is how he supposedly slept at night, because his head... Merrick's heavy head must have fallen backwards, causing instant death, not slow suffocation. So if you start coming back slowly, right. and you're dealing with a head that weighs... 20 pounds, you can imagine the old cook. Right. And that cuts off not only the blood supply through the vertebral artery, but it can also pith or put compression on the spinal cord. The vertebral artery and spinal cord are two of the body's essential lifelines. As Merrick's head tipped backwards, the weight twisted his vertebrae, causing irreversible damage to the nervous tissue and arteries extending down from the brain. For Vaccaro, the theory makes even more sense after he examined photographs taken of Merrick before he died. Something happened that his head was forcefully or volitionally, on a voluntary basis, moved to the right side. That would cause two things to happen. That would cause a significant neurologic deficit because you're crushing the spinal cord. And it would also put excessive stretch on the two major vessels that feed the brain, the vertebral arteries. And if you stretch them beyond a certain degree, you can have a stroke. You're not waking up from that because you can't, because you can't move your arms or legs anymore because now you're paralyzed. That makes sense. For the scientists, learning about Joseph Merrick has given them new insights into his tragic life and mysterious death. <laughs>